I think the control comes when you go to Stryber and then you are channeled into by him into one of the contactee cults. And he refers you to other people who had this experience. Those cults, in turn, are channeled through to the Space Brothers and everything, and their information is run by military intelligence. Let me give you one, one I gave you an example earlier, the UFO group out in the desert with single out and they see the saucer. Another, another one, similarly, in the New Age group, a shamanistic organization, um, is run by this guy named Harley Swiftier. Now, that's not his real name. He's an army intelligence agent from Korea, in the Korean War. He has all these white people in the group take native names. So it's like Marjorie Morningbird, you know, and they all take these names that they think sound like native names. And then, I mean, not only that deception, but they have this vision quest you go through. And when you go through it, they give you this drug, ecstasy, or XTC, they call it ecstasy. And while you're on the drug, then they guide you through this experience, and you see the Space Brothers come to you in this experience. So what? was dealing with a researcher who, who had seen a connection between the mind control victims' descriptions of consciousness and the UFO abductees, the missing time, a number of other elements, and began to suspect that this stuff was part of mind control operations. This woman had gotten out of this group, gone through the exercise thing, believed in it for a while, gotten out of it. She was a little freaked out at the time because when the Space Brothers came, among the things they did is they gave her a gun. It was in a plastic bag, and they handed her this gun. She didn't like guns. And they told her that she better get used to carrying a gun around and learn how to use a gun, because they might have a big job for her someday, and she'd have to use it. Then they told her, these subsequent things with the space post come, they told her they wanted her to follow John Lennon around and try to shake his hand. And subsequently, in one of the meetings of the group that she, she was at, Another woman who used the name Arlene Skywalker, who was the, her guide to these beings, told her that she had also been the guide for Mark David Chapman, the guy that actually shot John Lennon. Now see, this is what I, I think that this can be used as a programming matrix, just like Satanism or the black dog that talks to Son of Sam. You're really a government assassin. And then also later, the when she remembered the event years after getting out of this and getting away from it, the human faces reappeared. The UFO beings went away with the little slit eyes and human faces appeared giving her the gun. Okay, so I think that they were using the drug in some kind of disorientation, maybe a mask, whatever, to create an illusion that she was talking to people from outer space, but in fact, they were programming her. And if she had killed Lennon, she would say the Space Brothers told me to do it, or the devil told me to do it. So it's, to me, it's, even if they're not doing it for that purpose, it's a, it's a perfect excuse. Can you get something out of the experience? Probably. Anybody can develop something positive. I mean, I never used any drugs. I never used acid. I never smoked marijuana. I don't drink liquor. I never used any drug because I didn't want to change my flow of consciousness and the history of my consciousness. I didn't want to give that up because I didn't want to lose something in the process. But I knew people, you know, especially in the 60s when the acid was relatively pure before it got the strychnine and all the government drugs and the old Owsley acid that, and people would smoke marijuana then before the parkwat was sprayed on it and all the drugs became chemical toxins, that I thought, you know, develop something from that experience. I mean, I thought it opened them up a little bit. I found that when I was around people who were stoned, I had an easier time relating to them than, than people who weren't stoned for the most part. So sort of like they had my sense of humor and they caught up with me a little bit and had a better time with them and so, you know, but I, I never got stoned. I mean, I never did it, but so on the other hand, I knew of people that took acid and had, you know, horribly bad experiences with it. So I, I think it's like anything else and it might be in some cases a mystical or trans-dimensional experience of some kind or it might even be an extraterrestrial experience. All, all I'm saying is that is that there, there is another thing going on. There's another level of manipulation going on. And when somebody like Strieber, who's written these books on black magic and now writes this book backing up this Majestic 12 stuff, which I know is, Majestic 12 is supposed to be this group of 12 people in the government that are working for the aliens, and they have these documents. The documents are fake. They aren't legitimate intelligence documents. I've shared them. Fletcher Prouty's seen them. He's 
he, his, the guy that was portrayed as Mr. X in the JFK film and longtime intelligence operative, and he knows that they're not real documents, and, but these are put forward, and Strieber backs this stuff up, and Strieber has this book saying, I had this experience, and here's my address. And if you had this experience right to me, I would not write to that guy. I would not let that guy know that I had that experience, because to me, it's just classic sort of information gathering in a vacuum cleaner. And say, yeah, we got you. You think you were abducted by a UFO, so, you know, you got the message. And now we'll tell you what it meant, and we'll put you in touch with the UFO or whatever. I just don't, don't trust the approach. I think, you know, any, any experience can be positive. My experience with a flying saucer in the 1950s when I was five years old was probably the most positive thing that happened to me in terms of UFOs because I saw the human pilot. I didn't understand it when I was five. I understand it now I'm 45, but that human pilot in there was, was an army operative, probably out of Holabur or wherever they were flying them from, flying the damn thing. But I mean, I knew it was a human being. It didn't look like all the pictures that they had in the flying saucer magazines. These little green guys didn't look like a human being. So, you know, I understood it later. So I, I'm not, even if you, but if you, what I'm saying is if you connect with one of these phony UFO experiences, you're in trouble. And you're not going to have a very positive thing out of it. And they are manipulating it. And Jacques Vallée, I think if you haven't read him yet, read his books, especially the recent ones, Revelations and Messengers of Deception and these other ones, because that's a real scientist that's looking at this stuff, and he doesn't know what it is yet, he thinks it might be dimensional, but he also knows it's being manipulated. 